In this video, I'm going to show you how to trace dependence and precedence. What that means is if a formula in a cell relies on the contents of another cell, it might be a simple sum function or a VLOOKUP function or something else entirely. Just about anyone who has ever used Excel will have had some level of experience with this. What can be incredibly frustrating though, is if even just one of those cells contains a mistake. Without knowing how to trace the precedence or dependence of that cell, it can cause a real headache and mess up your entire spreadsheet. The good news is, you don't need to spend an hour searching for the error or where the chink in the chain is. I'm going to show you how to identify that quickly and Okay, so the basic premise of this hypothetical example is that a company has asked 26 of its employees to undertake four training modules. The first exam has a weighting of 15%, and the second, third, and fourth have a weighting of 25%, 50%, and 10% respectively. To pass any individual test, they need to score 50%, and to pass overall, they need a weighted average of 50%, which is in column G. An overall pass or fail, an overall pass or fail is reflected in column H. Now, the company has also decided that it's going to pay out a bonus based on the results of the exams. 60% of the bonus will be dictated by each individual's performance. So if they pass all exams and or if they get more than 70% overall. 40% of the bonus will be dictated by the group's overall performance. So 10% of the bonus will be unlocked if overall the company scores more than 80% on exam D and 30% of the bonus will be unlocked if the team gets more than 65% across all the exams overall. So the company really wants individuals to perform well and help drive the performance of the overall group. What everyone wants to know though, is how much of the bonus they unlocked. But you can see that column N, where that result should show, is riddled with errors. So where do we start trying to fix these errors? Okay, well first of all, we could use conditional formatting to highlight any cell that contains an error. That would help errors themselves to stand out on the page. For this, we can highlight the entire worksheet, then go into Home in the top ribbon, and across to Conditional Formatting. We hover over Highlight Cell Rules, and then click Text That Contains. Where it says Specific Text, we're going to change that selection to Errors, and then click OK. So that helps, but it also won't highlight every cell that is potentially messing up our formulas. It'll only identify cells that Excel has specifically identified as an actual error, that don't meet the proper syntax, for example, of formulas, or ones that are mathematically incorrect, for example, if you try to divide something by zero. So we've highlighted some of the errors, but haven't necessarily identified all of the cells that are messing up our calculations. Let's dive in and see what we can find. The first thing that we can do is trace precedence. Select any cell that doesn't look right. So maybe one of these errors in column N and then go into formulas in the top ribbon. Next, select trace precedence. So a precedent is a cell that feeds into a cell's formula. When you select trace precedence, it will draw arrows from all of the direct cells that directly contribute to that formula. You can see now that each of the cells in the same row in columns J to M are included, as are the cells that dictate how much of a bonus is unlocked based on a certain condition being met. The blue arrows are all intact, at least as far as errors are concerned. But there is one red arrow which is going to the cell in column J, so that's obviously contributing to the error in column N. We can click on that little exclamation mark that appears next to the error cell, and it says it's a divide by zero error. Okay, so why aren't there any arrows pointing to a zero? When you trace precedence, Excel will only look for precedence of the active cell. So in this case, the direct precedence of the cell we selected in column N. We could continue to trace precedence individually until we find our solution or we could use a keyboard shortcut to highlight every cell that feeds into our current selection. To do that, click back into the cell and hold down Control and Shift, and then press the open square bracket on the keyboard. 
Now, all of the cells that feed into this cell, either directly or indirectly, are going to be highlighted, which significantly improves our oversight and our ability to identify the issue. If we keep holding Control and Shift, and keep pressing Open Square Bracket, then it's going to gradually remove highlights from cells to show you the different levels of the formula. Okay, so from doing this, we can see that there is an error in cell G44 that is contributing to our predicament. If we click on that, and then the exclamation mark that appears next to it, we can see that this error is caused when we try to divide by zero. Let's once again hold Control and Shift and press square open bracket, and now we can see where the zero is that is causing us some issues. It's in cell F9. Now this was just an error that I deliberately placed here, but it could easily be caused by human input error or any other number of reasons. So the cells formula is currently trying to count the number of blanks in column F between rows 16 and 41. It should be counting the number of active cells instead, so we can change that formula accordingly. Great, that's fixed up a whole bunch of errors, but we've still got a few, and there's no standout for where that error is coming from. So once again, we can trace precedence, or else hold Control and Shift, and press open square bracket again to highlight all cells in this chain of values. And from doing that, we can see that there is a typo in cell J5, where it's meant to say 30%, but there is a typo, another human error. So we can go ahead and fix that. And now, all of our errors have disappeared. We can now see that all staff members have unlocked a portion of the bonus, although some have failed to do enough individually, while the group also didn't get enough on exam D to unlock that part of the bonus. Likewise in Excel, we can also determine what cells are dependent on a particular cell using trace dependence. Using the same method as before, we click on the cell we want to know about and go into formulas in the top ribbon and click trace dependence. That will show arrows pointing to the cells that this cell is directly linked to. To go a step further, we could alternatively hold control and shift and press close square bracket on the keyboard to highlight all of the cells that are directly or indirectly dependent on this cell. This might be of particular benefit to you if you're trying to find out what will be affected if you change or delete the cell or to help keep track of the multiple working layers of your spreadsheet. I hope you found this video useful and please like and subscribe for more Excel tips and hacks.